This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we have a Kenmore Laundry Center that the washer is not draining and not spinning. So when we set it to spin and turn it on, nothing's happening. So this could be caused, and it's also not draining, this could be caused, and often it's caused by a bad lid switch, this thing over here to the right. So we're going to unplug it or turn off the breaker. Here's me unplugging it. And we're going to check out a couple of things to see what's going on. Got it unplugged. It's nice and safe. So right here, these two screws can be pulled out. They're Phillips head screws to get to the lid switch. A lot of times the lid switch is actually broken and you can wrap something around it like a zip tie or even some strong tape to get the two plastic halves back together again. And that will get the lid switch working and then it'll spin and drain. That's really a common problem. So we just take out those two screws and we're just gonna reach in underneath and grab the lid switch, pull it out. You have a little bit of gap there with the wire so you can get it out where you can see it. And you may notice that the two halves have cracked apart. And then again, you can easily just put them back together again with a zip tie and then it should work really good. So another thing we could check out though is a little bit better test of the lid switch. To do that, we're gonna take out these two Phillips head screws here at the top of the middle panel between the washer and dryer. And then we're gonna get behind the top panel and remove a couple of screws here. It's hard to see it, but the camera here is allowing us to see these screws here in the back behind the top panel of the washer. We're gonna take out those two screws using a little ratchet to get to them. So here I am just loosening those two screws. Once those screws are taken out, you can then grab the upper panel and you can pull it towards you by about an inch and then you can lift it up. So I'm gonna take out those two screws, I'm gonna pull it toward me and then I'm gonna lift it up and then I'm gonna undo this electrical connector here. I'm gonna pinch in on it and then separate the two halves. Now I can lift this top panel off of the washing machine going to allow me to get to the lid switch and also do a little testing. Here's the lid switch. I'm moving the, the paddle up and down and when you do that you should hear a click. I've got my electrical tester in there and I'm testing it and moving the panel and I can hear it beeping which means that the lid switch is good in this case. So my next suspicion is the timer. When it goes to spin I don't hear anything. That usually means a bad lid switch. But if you've checked out the lid switch and it works, then we know the timer is the culprit. So to get to the timer on this model, I'm going to use my pliers to pull down on this little pin on the right side. And I'm going to pull on the left side and then I'll pull the top of this control panel toward me. So I'm going to pull down on that little pin and then pull the top toward me. And that's going to allow me to get this control panel off and then I can get to the timer. The timer is here on the left hand side and to get the timer out we're going to do a couple things to loosen it and get this electrical connector off. I'll lift up on this tab and then I'll wiggle this big electrical connector off of the timer. And I'm going to use my needle nose pliers to pull up on this pin that's right in the middle of the timer. By pulling it toward me, it'll release it'll release that knob on the front. I can pull the knob off, and then I can pull the knob underneath off. So I get those off, and then to get the timer off, I have to remove a quarter inch screw here on the right side of the timer and then should be able to get this timer off. So we'll wiggle it off and now I can use some electrical cleaner to spray in and try to get the little metal contacts inside the timer cleaned up. So you can get this electrical cleaner online. You can even get it at Home Depot in the electrical section. And it comes with a little red tube that you can use to spray in to the timer 
You want to get any hole that you can see in the timer. Just spray the stuff in and then take the timer and turn it by hand, the timer stem, and then spray in some more, turn it some more, and keep doing that so the cleaner can get on all these little metal contacts and clean the carbon deposits off. Usually the spin one gets so much use that it develops some carbon and then no longer gives it a good electrical connection. So cleaning it up can really do a good uh, service to get it spinning. You can also end up replacing the timer and that'll certainly fix it. But a lot of times just cleaning it will do the trick. So I've sprayed in quite a bit of cleaner. I moved the dial back and forth numerous times and then did it one more time with more cleaner and eventually it was enough to clean those contacts for the spin sequence. And then I just put the timer back into position and then reattached everything. Okay, so I have to just slide the timer tabs here, the plastic tabs back into these metal slots. I'm gonna go in and then I'll push the timer a little bit to my left to lock them in. And to keep everything in place, I'm gonna add that quarter inch screw back in on the right hand side. So I got it locked in, coming in at that angle. Line up that screw hole. Add that quarter inch screw back in, I got those in. Put my electrical connector back into position. I got that timer nice and clean. And I already checked the lid switch works. Got the timer clean so it should spin. If it still doesn't spin, I just have to replace the timer. They're kind of expensive, so I think it's better to try to clean them up. All right, I'm gonna put that little pin back in. That's gonna hold the um, front knob back on. Get the knob in position. Then I'll push in on that black pin, push in, and that locks it in place. There we go. I'm gonna put this control panel back into position. I'll line it up and then I'll pull on the pin and then let go and that should lock it in. I'm gonna lock it in at the top. I'll plug it back in. I'm gonna put it on spin, pretty much anywhere on the dial, put it on spin, pull back, and then I can see now that it is draining. Water's shooting out, it's spinning. I have the front panel off here. I can look, actually look in and see that it's spinning. You don't have to take off this front panel, by the way, just, just to show you guys. You can see the clutch is spinning down there. You can see the spin basket spinning. So that did the trick. In this case, by cleaning the timer, we got it working. These are really good machines. A lot of these are pretty old, but they just keep going. Pretty impressive. So now to put it back together, we'll put the top panel back into position. We'll hook the little electrical connector together again for the lid switch. Don't forget to do that. Push those two back together. We'll get the upper panel back down and we'll push it in toward the back. So it goes in over the front clips and we're gonna add those two screws back in behind the front panel. Just gotta be patient, make sure you get the front clips locked in. There we go. So this is a little tricky because you can't really see well, but just try to line up the hole. And sometimes I use like uh, something sharp to line the holes up first and then I'll put the screws back in. And using a magnetic uh, driver here helps. Then I'm gonna put the middle panel back on. Add those Phillips head screws in. There we go. And then I'll set it for spin. And again, it's working good. Draining, spinning really well. Here's the model number for this particular machine. So hope this has helped you guys and yours is working now and hope you get a chance to subscribe to our channel. It really helps us.
Thanks so much for watching our video today. I hope that this video has saved you some time and money. And if so, could you please press down in the video description below the donation link and send us a donation so we can keep this service going. Thanks again. And if you have any questions about this repair, could you contact me at scottthefixitguy at yahoo.com.